Hey everybody, today we're going to learn about images and filtering by solving a mystery, the case of the splotch Van Gogh. This Van Gogh image is way too big, it doesn't even fit on the screen. Let's shrink it by a factor of two. We've reduced it to half the width and height. That's one quarter as many pixels, but still too large. So let's try it again. Getting closer. Almost there. Okay, this fits, but hmm. It looked kind of noisy. Let's zoom in. Yeah, definitely noisy. Gets even worse if you keep going. Let's take a closer look. What are all those weird dots? This image has been splotched. On the right is what it should look like at the same resolution. What happened? To figure this out, we need to start by seeing how images are represented on a computer. You can think of an image as a grid of picture elements or pixels for short. These are like the atoms of the image. To make things simple, let's start with a grayscale image. We can represent this image as an array of numbers. Each number here encodes the intensity of a pixel. Zero means black and 255 is white. We'll zoom in to see these a bit more clearly. For example, consider this bright pixel on Van Gogh's shirt. It has a value of 197 out of 255, which is quite intense. All right, now how do we represent this color image? You can think of it as a sum of three images, one with all the red light, another green, and the third blue. Each of these channels is represented as an array of numbers. Here's what the red channel looks like. His beard is pretty reddish, so this beard pixel has a relatively large red value. But if you look in the blue channel, well, there's not much blue there. 26 is pretty low. Okay, now we're ready to try resizing the image. We're going to do this by throwing out every other row and then every other column. We can repeat this process to get even smaller images. Let's see what happens when we resize this black and white grid pattern. Whoa, we've lost every single one of the black pixels. That's not good, but there's something really interesting going on here and it's related to how cameras work. Let's take a look. If you took your camera apart like this, which I don't recommend, you'd see an image sensor. The sensor is basically an array of light sensitive photodiodes surrounded by a bunch of electronics. Photons fly in but only the ones that hit the photodiodes are measured. This is just like throwing out every other row and column, like what we've been doing. So that's going to create some problems. For example, have you ever tried to take a photo of your laptop screen and got weird patterns like this? Turns out this is very related to our image resizing problem. What's happening here is that there are two grids, the camera sensor and the laptop display. These grids interact in strange ways. You see those funny fringe effects? They're called moiré patterns. The splotches on the Van Gogh image are a type of moiré pattern. You can mitigate this problem by adding an anti-aliasing filter on top of the sensor. How does that work? And what's up with the weird name? To answer these questions, we need to know a bit more about images. So these pixels, they're not actually little squares. They're discrete samples of a continuous function. When you sample like this, you miss lots of details. For example, notice that only one sample lands exactly on the red lips. And if we moved our sampling grid even slightly, we'd miss the lips entirely. This shows up as a random red dot in Van Gogh's mouth. All the other random dots are similar. That's why it looks so splotchy. Instead of taking just one point, we should be averaging the pixel values in a local window. This is called filtering. And stay tuned for part two, where we learn how to filter.